Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. In today's game, up on the tabletop is Jap Anime Tactics, the expandable battle games, Grand Blue Fantasy IP portion of the game. This is the first full IP set up for Jap Anime Tactics, and there should be and will be hopefully more of this to come. So other IPs like Sword Art Online. But what we have here is the Grand Blue Fantasy content. And uh, in this game, it's a two player game. It takes roughly about 40 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. You're gonna be selecting a team of characters from Grand Blue Fantasy, and you're gonna be battling against your opponent. There are two base game sets, and there's also an expandable volume one that comes with additional characters and cards to play with. Now you're going to set the game up, have each character be on different sides of the game board, and play in one of many different objectives, whether it be King of the Hill, van Vandalism, Bounty Hunters, Rescue Hostage, and more. Can you, you defeat your opponents or gain enough victory points to achieve your objective? Find out in the game Grand Blue Fantasy from Jap Anime Tactics. Let's get into how to set the game up and the basics of how to play. I've already done a full playthrough of this game though, so I have a link down below where you can watch to see the full playthrough of it. So I'll mainly be just doing a review for this one. So for this game, it's two, but if you buy both of the sets, both base sets of the game, you can actually play up to four players. It'll come with additional bases, it'll come with additional characters, as well as boards and whatnot. So all the different pieces that you see here, there's like double of this. To set the game up, you're going to be actually organizing these four main boards here and flipping them and rotating them and placing them on the game board. From there, you're going to go ahead and place all of these, uh, basically they're like heightened terrain spaces on the white checkered areas. You'll take all the trees and place them on the red tree spaces. If you want, you don't actually have to. It just it, it just shows that these spaces are blocked off so that you cannot see them or you cannot like pass them. They're like impassable terrain. And, and then you're going to go ahead and take characters. There are four in the base game, and you can choose two of them, and then you set aside, set aside each of them for each player as a team of two. Uh, each player is also going to take and place their characters based on the setup for the game. And this one here I have set up as basically the King of the Hill variant, in which each player will set up their characters on the left and right hand side of the game board. Uh, you're going to go ahead and also take the round marker and tracker and place the marker on one. Now, there's a total of six rounds in this game, but it really depends on which of the objectives you're playing with. Set aside all the damage markers as well as the defense markers and within reach of all players, any additional bases that you do not need and objective tiles that you may or may not be using can be set aside. Uh, give each player a victory point marker, start them on zero, and then give each player their main two character cards. In this case, I have Deja and I have Catalina. And then I also have a command card. You'll set those aside and place them on the board in front of you. And then you'll have your deck. This is the rest of your cards here. You'll shuffle it up and you will draw two and give the first player marker to whoever you'd like to start the game. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, the setup really depends on which of these different objectives that you're playing, but I'll cover some objectives during the review portion. I'll just get into the basics of how to play the game now. I think you get the idea. Set up the board, set the characters based on the objective, place your three cards out, and then draw two from the rest in the deck. Everything else is set aside or discarded. So playing Jap Anime Tactics, how it works is you'll start with two cards in hand. And at the beginning of your turn, you'll actually draw two cards. You can even look at the back of this rule book and it'll explain the not only the setup with the module, but also the round phase. After you've drawn, you'll take an action phase and you'll activate one character at a time, starting with the first player. And you can chain activations by matching the color of the color of the card that you just played. So I've got my four cards here. I had two and I drew two because I have two characters. And now I'm going to go ahead and play something like Affection Oath. I'll take this card. I can place it on either character or the command. And basically it's going to like block that space. In each round of the game, uh, once all three of your cards have been utilized, that'll be it. And when both players have either passed or used all three of their cards, that'll end the round and you move on to the next round, etc. right? I'll place this one on Vera. I'll place Vera's card on Vera. When you place a card on one of these spaces here, you are going to be able to choose to either activate the top portion or the bottom portion of the card. And the top portion is going to tell you a color and a symbol affiliated with the card. It, there are many different actions in the game that you can do. You'll be able to perform a dash with a foot icon or a move. 
Uh, you can attack with the explosion symbol. Uh, you can defend with a defense symbol. You can draw slash interact with the hand. Um, and of course, you can also pass the first player, use a character ability. Now, on the bottom of the card, so if you're not using the top portion, which has the symbol, and you're using the bottom portion. And the bottom portion has an, a specific action that you can do with the specific character. You may only use the bottom of the card if it matches the character that you're placing it on or the command card and affecting the character that it is shown here. Uh, this is Vera, it's Affection Oath, and it's an attack. It tells you the attack, it tells you that it's a damage of five, and it tells you the range of two. And it says after you attack, she heals equal to the damage that she dealt. So if I wanted to, I'd play that on her. And as long as I was able to get into range of a character, I could assign that damage and then they have a chance to defend themselves. And from there, I could go ahead and play another card, but I have to chain it. I have to match the color of the symbol of the card I previously played. If I don't have that or do not want to, I can simply pass and the next player will get a chance to go. They'll draw their two cards and then they'll play a card on their character. They could perhaps play something like DJ will play uh, Tempest Blade in which they can attack two different enemies. Or in this case, because she actually can't make it far enough, she'll have to actually have her move. Well, we'll have her move. She's got a foot symbol. A symbol plus the three on the card is gonna be four because you can get bonuses when you play cards on the specific characters based on A, if it matches the symbol of the action you wanna play and the color, in which case you could take that character and then you can move her, boom, 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 and move her across the, the game board. Uh, let's talk about the game board and we'll talk about all the cards and all that kind of stuff. Like I just wanted to give you a basic idea of the game. You're playing a card on each of the three the command card is kind of a wild. You'll be able to move with these characters like a general tactics game. You'll be able to go up and scale up or down. There's a little bit of like impassable terrain, there's difficult terrain, and there's objective terrain. Uh, and attacking is basically being able to attack with a specific range and number. So uh, this is the board here. These are trees, they are impassable, so are the rocks. The other areas like bushes are blue, which makes them difficult and also can provide cover. Uh, cover is a way, oh sorry, blue is cover and yellow is difficult, but cover is a way to protect you. You'll gain actually a defense as long as the enemy's ha attack has to go through it or you are currently in it, as long as they're not adjacent to you. Some spaces will require an extra step of movement to get up, but not an extra step to get down. And this here is the King of the Hill objective. It's got this little gold bar in the middle. This is a space that you're basically gonna be vying for. And at the end of the round, you'll gain victory points, provided you have at least a character on there or you have the most characters on there. Um, attacking in this game is pretty simple as well. If, for instance, I wanted to attack with her to her, I'd have to have a range attack, first of all. And that range would have to meet or exceed the number of spaces to this character here. And it would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if it was six and I could reach her, I would do damage. Uh, if, for instance, I was here and there's a blue space, it'd be one, two, three, uh, four, five, and six. And I had to go through blue, which means it's going to be six, uh, six range, but also they're gonna get a defense of one because they're being protected. If you're adjacent and you're using like a melee attack or whatever, you can ignore the cover because you're just simply hitting her face on. Characters have a number of HP represented on the top left hand of their card. Whenever they take damage, they will suffer it with these markers here. And if they ever run out of HP, their character is removed and they're left with less characters in the game. If you lose a character in this game, it's very likely that you are in deep, deep trouble. Uh, usually in certain modes, victory points are awarded to players who defeat other players' characters. Uh, there are awarded specific points based on the specific game mode. And typically speaking, you will play a card and you'll pass to your opponent and uh, they will go back and forth until all cards have been played. And of course you can chain attacks if you follow the rules. Uh, as for movement, uh, there could be a number, it's, it's based on the character. Each of your characters have a number of spaces present on the bottom. And if you're ever using, the, and if you're never using the top portion of the card, you'll either just move the base movement or you'll gain a bonus for the symbol and the color. So if this symbol and color do not match, which is the case, this character would just simply move three if I attach this card to her. It doesn't have to match the character, only the bottom does. So you can always play the top portion on any character. Uh, you're also able to sprint, which is double movement, but you will not be able to take an action afterwards. You're just simply going to end your turn. Um, and there's the interactive, which is allowing you to draw cards as well. So there's quite a few different actions, as well as the very special action of the specific character on the bottom of the card. 
Uh, so in this specific game mode, you'd probably be wanting to run up to this location here as quickly as possible because at the end of the round, whoever is there, if you have the most characters there, you're going to assign yourself victory points because it's the king of the hill mode. Uh, when the round is over, you'll move the round marker one space. You will remove any end of round effects, which could be things like defense, which will protect your character. Um, and you're also going to be basically um, drawing an additional two cards. So you don't draw cards up until the point where the next round begins. And these cards are very useful, so running out of them can be very uh, detrimental. So sometimes it might be worth drawing additional cards. And that's the basic idea of the game. It's a tactics game. You go back and forth, playing cards on your characters, trying to chain attacks and complete the objective. At the end of the round, you clean up everything, uh, disassemble anything that only lasts until the end of the round, remove any defense, uh, and then progress round to round to round, where either the game will end in some way, whether it be rounds or victory points, or maybe it's a battle royale where you try to defeat all your opponent's characters, in which whoever has the most points or achieved the victory condition is the winner of the game, Grand Blue Fantasy. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover the Grand Blue Fantasy objectives before we get into the full review and everything of the game. And uh, there are two starter sets. You have this one here, and then you have this one over here, the Grand Starter Set and the Deja Starter Set. Uh, and they each come with their own unique objectives. Uh, this one here is Rescue Hostage, which makes one of your characters a hostage, and you have to go ahead and save them from the opposite side of the, the game board. Uh, Vandalism, which will be providing you uh, the different crates. You'll be placing these like objective markers across the game board, and you'll be attempting to destroy them. Uh, so you'll gain points by beating the crates up that do nothing, they're just sitting there. But other opponents want to defeat them as well. So they can actually gain three points to defeat you, or they can gain six points when they defeat a crate. And then we also have bounty hunters. So you'll choose one of your opponent's characters to be a bounty, and your objective is to end your turn with one of your characters, or end the round with one of your characters, or multiple characters next to them. And bounties never die. If you ever reduce them to zero health, they always go back to one. And you'll end the game basically with victory points. Each of these objectives has a unique victory point option that will allow you to win the game. And like I said, there are additional objectives in the different starter sets. Uh, another thing I want to talk about too is this here. This is the Volume 1 uh, Expandable Base Deluxe Set, or a display box set, I guess. And basically, this is like a booster box in like Magic the Gathering or LO5R, probably an older, older Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, right? Uh, but this works a little differently. How this works is you don't know which box is which, but when you open it up, uh, you will be able to, there's a sticker that comes inside this thing as well, a, a set of stickers. You open it up and you'll see which character you got. So you'll take this guy out here and you maybe you buy them individually or all together. This will give you a character. It comes with, with, with its own standee. And then it'll give you a character card as well as a bunch of all the cards you need to play that specific character. This is Vas Vaseraga. Oof. Uh, two of these in, in this box here are going to come with a foil card. So it's kind of like it's that's kind of like the special thing you can get. But the difference between this and a regular booster box of like magic cards or whatever is although you don't know necessarily what you're going to get in each of these boxes, or each of these individual packs, you do know that the entire box is going to come with the entire set. So if you buy all of this, you will get all of the characters, and two of the characters will come with a special foil character card. And these are interchangeable with these guys here. And they also allow you to play with multiple characters when you get both sets of the base game. As you can see here, now I have four of these purple uh, characters and four of the yellow. The other box will come with like blue and red so that you can play with teams, you can play multiple players, um, you can play like up to four players in this game, at least with the base games that I have. I don't know how far this can go up to, but it's a two player and then I guess it can go up to four players if you buy extra stuff and then there's additional characters that you can occupy if you pick up the full on box set. This is a basic tactics game. You are playing cards on characters and then choosing which side of the card to use and then activating a special ability or you are basically doing one of the basic actions in a tactics game. You are moving or you are running and slamming into people, knocking them off, making them take damage or bumping them into walls, uh, pushing them off of certain areas on the game board to like give yourself control. Like, oh, we're both on King of the Hill here. I push you off with a sprint and I knock this character down. Um, you're also going to be able to do attacks. There is a basic attack, 
then you have special attacks, you have range attacks. Some attacks will ignore collision entirely or ignore like the like immovable terrain. It will ignore defenses completely. Uh, there's also defense in this game. Now, typically you're just gonna take uh, the damage or you can flip over the top card of your, your deck and see uh, if it matches the symbol and the icon of your defense. And if it does, you'll increase that defense. So I'm looking for, if I'm being hit by Deja, she's got a pink shield. I wanna actually draw from the top of my deck a shield or a pink card, or in fact, both would be nice to increase her defense by one or two. There's also special cards in the game where if you draw them as defense or play them, they're basically an ultimate defense. You attack me for a million, I slam this guy down, it has a little infinite defense symbol, your attack is completely negated. There's one for each character in your deck. And so playing them is a good protection in order to save yourself from potentially dying or taking lethal damage, uh, lots of damage. Basically, these characters have a, a small health pool and their attacks can rank up or range to being very high to simply doing quite a bit of damage. Additionally, what's cool too is some of these characters will come with bonuses and equips and there are here's a few of them so Catalina has this action called path of duty and it's an equipment you equip it to, she can equip it to herself and if she would be defeated she discards this and she survives with one hp wow uh, this one over here is an equipment but you can equip an ally with it and when when equipped when defending or performing an action this character may discard this card for a bonus to any one of their stats and then there's also bonuses here. This one here says, after she defends, each other ally within two spaces of her gains one, a one defense token. And defense tokens, while on characters, will last the entire round. So if I take my actions, any actions, after that defense has been placed up until the end of the round, these characters are protected by plus one defense. So there are other cards. It's not just attack and defend. There's also like equipment cards in the game and there's things you can help yourself, other players, as well as bonuses. Each character functions very differently. This is a game of like mages, knights, uh, healers, sorcerers, spellcasters. Uh, and because of that, some characters are very good at one thing and really bad at another thing. If you're playing with a team of full healers, Prepare to get yourself brutalized because, well, yes, you'll heal yourself. You probably are not going to be able to heal yourself long enough to sustain the amount of damage that somebody like, oh, I don't know, Catalina is going to deal to you, the Blue Sky Guardian. She starts swinging and eventually when she's equipped or fully equipped, she can pretty much decimate one of your characters. And so your mages and your healers definitely need to stay at a range. They need to be protected uh, by characters that have kind of a defense. And so you'll start to notice if you pick up this game, having additional characters that you can kind of swap in and out of to kind of create your perfect team is going to be rather important and useful as well. And how you play your team is important. Maybe you want to run two mages. That could work. But your objective is to stay as far away from your opponents as possible as they bring in their melees to come deal with you. You're going to constantly want to be like juking them and protecting yourself, hiding in cover and that kind of a thing. This plays like Final Fantasy Tactics. It's got that kind of style to it. Uh, those old school like JRPG tactics games. That's what this is right here. That's straight up what this is. But you're playing against from players to players with unique objectives in the game. There's a lot to love about this game. And let's go into a few things and I'll talk about the negatives. So the artwork for the game is great. I love the character artwork. I love the character artwork on the cards. Uh, the 3D terrain is awesome. I hope they even present, pre present more of them with each new starter box that uh, becomes available. These added trees, maybe I'd like to see the rocks as well. I love the platforms. These are things that are not needed, but provide a nice kind of 3D effect or element to the game. Uh, all the pieces are high quality pieces. I, re I really do like them. The cards are nice quality. Uh, the victory pre uh, tracker was nice to put together. Some of these can be nasty and this one actually was really good. Um, and the character standees, these are acrylic standees. They look really nice. Uh, the artwork on there is beautiful with the characters. I love that. Some characters are huge and massive and other characters are like thin and small, but they all actually fit pretty well in the bases and work well together. And the game, the gameplay is simple. It's straightforward. There's a few things you can do as you change up your characters and customizations. It's important to kind of rally your units to how they play and you don't play them how you want to play. You play them how they want to play, which is very relevant in the game. And learning the best way to work with your heroes is how you're going to win this game. 
setting up your specific teams is important and it can be your downfall if you choose a team that's not very good against another team. And of course, moving in to people like melee when you're ranged is a fatal, fatal flaw that you will learn quite quickly. Overall, the game is a beautiful JRPG, like tactical combat game that brings me back and I love that about this game. All right, some negatives. First thing that caught my eye was that these standees are not double-sided. I really, 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 really wish they were double-sided. Uh, it's hard when I'm looking at the back of these to tell which character is which. I don't know why that was decided. Maybe it was an IP thing. Uh, maybe it was decided by the, you know, the company who runs Grand Blue. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. But that was the one thing that like originally caught my eye. That was like, ah, come on now. Uh, the rulebook is not too complicated. There's a few little things about understanding how to chain attacks and then understanding the realizing how the cards work that have like the top and bottom portions and then they, the top can be used for any of the cards and the bottom is used for specific characters. It's not a huge deal, but like once you get into the rulebook and you, you cover it maybe once or twice, then you'll get the game or you can just watch my playthrough of it. It's not super long or anything, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue, but it was a minor thing. Uh, the other thing, my last kind of gripe about this game is the sprites on the cards. I like this. I wish there was more. Every single sprite for Deja is the same sprite, pretty much. There's a, there, there are slight differences. This one is her holding the sword backwards, and then she's got it kind of um, behind her, and that's it. I really wish they had the different sprites. I actually really like the sprite models. This takes me back to that old school JRPG, um, like action RPG type of thing. I just wish this, the sprites were a little different and there was more of them. I don't know, those are really my only complaints though. If you like Grand Blue Fantasy and the characters, you're going to enjoy this type of tactics game. Uh, it's, it's really straightforward. If you want to play with more players, you obviously have to pick up both of these guys here. And if you want to have even even a wider variety of characters, then this comes out as well. It's probably going to be a pretty penny. However, if you're okay with just playing the starter game, which is literally everything you see here. This is just this one little box here. It'll come with all the characters and everything that you need in order to play the game. And it's all high quality stuff. Minor nitpicks overall, but I feel like for those players who are like looking forward to this game and want to play what they saw, because this has been, has been announced for a bit, uh, then you're going to be very satisfied with this. So you'll have a few probably few minor gripes about it, but otherwise the quality, the artwork, the feeling of an ARPG like tactical battling game is all here. And the fact that you can expand it if you want. The thing I'm looking forward to most about this game, other than just I enjoyed the gameplay and switching up the heroes, the thing I really am excited for is the Sword Art Online, which I hope they come out with, because I really want to check that one out, because I'm a really big fan of Sword Art. So, but yes, overall, this is a solid tactics game. If you like tactics games, and you want something from this IP, and you want something that's going to be customizable and expandable, then here you go. Yes, I approve. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for Grand Blue Fantasy Jap Anime Tactics. I'm looking forward to the other IPs in this specific game. Uh, also, if you're looking for more videos, go ahead and like, comment, hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos that we do just like right here. Yeah? As well as check out our live stream for this game. If you want to learn the enti entire rules like accurately, we play throughout the game, we explain the game, and all the unique things that happen in the game are there down below, link. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to battling it out with you in Grand Blue Fantasy and Sword Art Online next time.